Welcome to lesson four of week four, where we look back and we look forward. The first thing is that congratulations, really. You've made it so far and that's very well done. Programming is hard work for most of us. And if you've got here and you've done most of the exercises and the assignments, well done you, you deserve plenty of plaudits. Now, let's look back at what we covered. We covered quite a lot of the basics of Julia, values, types, variables, functions, local and global scope, logical test structures, a branching code. So that's quite a lot to cover and we also did some file input output so that we can use all of that on a text file. We looked a little bit at uh, the theory of formal logic and why computing is applied formal logic and I hope you remember that what that means is that all of these things need to be combined in valid code and uh, the values the, uh, the names, the operators, the, the delimiters, they have to follow the rules very exactly. So we applied it all to text that we created ourselves, a few numbers here and there, and also to the sample text file. And we even learned a bit of Monte Carlo simulation in the process. It's been quite a journey. And you could actually do quite a substantial project using no more Julia knowledge than what we've shared with you on this course. But, of course, there's much, much more to Julia than that. Julia is a very recently created language, which means it can draw on decades of experience and, and other languages that people have gotten excited by. And what Julia has been trying to do, the designers of Julia have been trying to put it all together in a, in a, in a language that appeals to a very wide audience with its ease where you write the code, the efficiency, when you extend your, co your code, and all along that the code is actually blindingly fast at the same time. So there's a lot of that that we didn't go into, but all of that is actually part of Julia. So a lot of things, I will just give you a whole long list of topics. Don't get too frightened by this long list, but if you want to do these, uh, if you want to do, look at Julia right after this course, then in the order of how accessible it would be to you, you could improve your coding style. You could access and use uh, Julia's packages. You could make plots and other graphics with Julia. You could learn how to collaborate with others. You could start using user-defined types. You could start uh, using Julia's system of modules. Um, you could start getting into high-speed performance and to metaprogramming. And there's still much more than that. I haven't even mentioned the huge array of built-in functions that you could learn to use. But really, you should not be intimidated. You not, need not take all, all of that on. You need not take any of it on, um, even if you start using Julia. You've already come a significant way. And in fact, maybe you've gained everything you want from learning to program. It's fine to pat yourself on the back and go on to do something else. But, 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 if you want to continue with Julia, there are many online tutorials and courses, and you will gain a lot simply from re uh, reading the Julia documentation. Uh, you could also start doing a project that interests you and just work on it and enjoy yourself. And you can ask for help online at Discourse Julia, uh, at the Stack Overflow is a special Julia uh, topic. Um, um, if you're interested, then you should really search through all the packages that are uh, available at this particular uh, URL and there will be plenty for you to explore and enjoy and many of these packages actually when you go into them you find they have tutorials that you will find accessible and you might even find a package that you like so much that you want to help develop it. You don't have to develop it by contributing some of the main code. You can start by developing uh, just the, the documentation. That's a support that very many people would love you to do particularly if you are a beginner because then you read with a beginner's eye and you spot things that the documentation needs that the experienced people simply do not see. Um, I would recommend that you re uh, learn at least one of the two other interfaces, iJulia and Juno. They are alternatives to our way of just working with uh, the repo and with uh, actual code files. So iJulia is a very clean interface. It's a so-called notebook. And what that allows you to do is you can, you can write code or you can write text. So the detailed discussions, can, you can have a bit of that, then you can have a bit of code. 
and it's the bits of code fit very elegantly into their cells in between the text. So Jean Klopper and I uh, use it for a course called uh, Scientific Programming in Julia, which you will find on Coursera over here. Now Juno is a so-called IDE, an Integrated Development Interface. And uh, all at one screen, or oh, you get a REPL, you get an editor, you get the graphics if you need it, you can see your file system, you can even see other file systems, for instance, on github.com and more. Uh, it takes a, a bit of learning to learn to use it well, but if you get there, it will really push up your productivity. And last of all, what about other options in Julia? So much as we love Julia, of course, we recognize that your choice of language is influenced in very many ways. Uh, you would have lots and lots of, of, of motives and purposes. Maybe your workplace is putting pressure on you. Maybe there's a specialized language that you know about. Maybe you feel that for your job options, you should look at one of the better known, more popular languages. Um, and, and of course, maybe you're just curious to see what the other languages are and what, how they do things, and maybe you would like one of them better. So there's a whole world of programming out there. Goodbye and good luck.